Since receiving the Sono Sub Gen 3, I've come up with a video comparing the Sub Gen 2 with this. I've covered all the differences and the similarities. They do largely look and sound the same, but in my channel, nothing goes uninvestigated and we have uncovered that the driver design is actually completely changed and Sonos did not talk about that new design at all. Today, we shall measure the frequency response differences between the Sub Gen 2 and the Gen 3 to see if the cone design differences changes the sound profile. So what you see in front of you here now is the Sonos Sub Gen 3 in black and the Sonos Sub Gen 2 in white. As I have promised to my viewers, I will always try to give my answer up front. So if you don't have the time to watch the full video today, you can get the straightforward answer early. But if you stay on, you can learn about how I arrive at my conclusion and learn about my methods. And a quick answer to the question is, yes, there is a small change to the sound profile. Take a look at the chart here. There's a red frequency response curve and a green one. The red one has higher output at lower frequencies and the green one has higher outputs at the higher frequency ranges. Without telling you which curve is for which sub, tell me, which one would you choose? Did you choose the red curve or the green curve? Do let me know your answer in the comment section below. And now I will tell you the red frequency response curve is for the Sonos Sub Gen 3 and the green one represents the frequency response for the Sub Gen 2. Below 48 Hz, the output level for the Sonos Sub Gen 3 is actually significantly higher than the Sub Gen 2. Above 48 Hz, the Sub Gen 2 then pulls ahead of the Gen 3 slightly before both sub tails off at about 90 Hz, with the Gen 3 falling off earlier. For more details, do watch on. The Sonos Sub Gen 2 is paired to my Sonos M, driving four Yamaha ceiling speakers, and this sub has been in service for about two years now. The Sonos Sub Gen 3, connected to my new Sonos Arc, is about two days old, with only about an hour of service time on this guy. I haven't had much time working on this, but in about a month's time, I'll probably do another test on the Gen 3 when it's been running a bit. So any differences that we uncover today could be a function of the drivers not being fully run in on the Sub Gen 3. On my previous video covering the differences between the two, I've uncovered a very significant difference, which is that the drivers are completely different. The drivers on the Sonos Sub are kind of hidden away from plain sight, so it's not something that most people will notice right away. In my review of the Sonos Sub Gen 3, I have shared that the drivers on the Sub Gen 3 are a lot deeper than the drivers on the Sub Gen 2. The rubber surrounds are also significantly thinner on the Sub Gen 3, which kind of results in a larger movable cone surface area, which is moving air to produce the sound. A viewer has also pointed out that a thinner surround could also mean less distortion for the Sub in general. And because the sound profile is largely similar during casual listening, you probably won't hear much of a difference right away. And most people won't have both generations of the sub side by side for an A-B listening test. But because it's me doing a comparison test, I will dig into every aspect of a wireless audio product and pull out everything that we need to know about this Sonos sub. So if you're keen to keep up with these videos and reviews, as well as my opinions on wireless audio, do consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like for this video. In today's test, I have set up a U-Mic 1, which is connected to my MacBook Pro here. This MacBook is running Room EQ Wizard REW, which is a tool that a lot of home theater enthusiasts use to calibrate their system. Today, we are using this setup to output a frequency sweep from 20 Hz to 110 Hz on both the subs. The sound is channeled to the subs via AirPlay. The U-Mic is placed centrally between the two subs equal distances apart. The output levels from both the subs have also been tuned to the same exact levels as measured by an SPL sound pressure level meter here. The sub gain has also been increased to plus 15 so that when the mic is picking up sounds, it's mostly coming from the sub and not the arc or the ceiling speakers. 
Now this is to ensure that the relative volume of everything else other than the sub is not being measured. And I've placed the sub a fair distance away from the arc or the ceiling speakers, obviously, so that the sound from the amp or the arc doesn't get mixed in and picked up by the U mic one. Also, I've limited the frequency sweep to between 20 Hz and 110 Hz. So technically, that's the frequency range that is being handled purely by these two subs. Now let's get to the actual test itself. The first thing that I'm going to do is to run a frequency sweep through the two subs. First on the Gen 2, followed by the Gen 3. I'll now cast it to the Sonos amp, which has the Sonos sub Gen 2 connected. Next, we'll switch over to the sub Gen 3, which is connected to the Sonos Arc. Let's do the same measurement, same test. So let's apply smoothing to both the curves. So that it's easier to see. Now before I took this video, I've already done quite a few rounds of testing to ensure that the results are as consistent as possible. And the curves that you're seeing here are the actual representation of what is being measured. There is very little variance between the dozens of runs that have put them through. So you can be quite confident that there's very little margin of errors in this set of results that I'm showing you. Now this is a very interesting find. This is exactly what I said earlier in this video. The sub Gen 3 actually has significantly higher output below 48 Hz. And above 48 Hz, the sub Gen 2 actually dominates all the way, but by a much smaller margin. Now you look at the frequency response at 30 Hz. The sub Gen 3 is putting out a very significant 3 decibels more output. On the decibel scale, that actually translates to twice the volume. And moving down to the claimed 25 Hz output, the difference is still significantly higher for the sub Gen 3, which is about 3 dB higher output levels. This is significant. What a sub needs to do is to provide power at the lower frequencies to any speakers that you pair it with. And this set of results will show that the sub Gen 3 will do that better than the sub Gen 2, at least on paper and in theory. And if you think about the recent issues reported with the Sonos Arc in terms of it handling bass, the sub Gen 3 will actually take those problematic frequencies away from the Arc and channel it into itself. And it will do it better than the sub Gen 2 can. Moving on to the frequency response above 48 Hz, we can see then that the sub Gen 2 overtakes the Gen 3, but to a lesser extent, giving about 1 to 2 decibel extra in output over the Gen 3. Overall, I'll say that the sub Gen 3 will give a higher output across the effective frequency range that it has been assigned to cover. At a higher frequency range where the sub Gen 2 can cover better, that's actually the range where the main speakers actually starts and begins to handle. So you technically don't need the extra power at that range already. There's been some talk about the solo sub Gen 3 being able to handle down to 20 Hz. From my measurement, you'll see that it's actually outputting higher than the Gen 2 at that range. But the output is so low that I'm stating matter-of-factly that both of these subs won't handle anything lower than 25 Hz effectively. So if I didn't tell you which curve belonged to which sub, the likelihood is that you have chosen the sub Gen 3 based simply on the fact that it has higher outputs at lower frequencies. So my conclusion for today's video is that there is definitely a difference in the sound profile for the Sono Sub Gen 3 and the previous Sub Gen 2. And based on the readings and measurement, the difference is actually a step in the right direction. Now, not everyone has the same taste in music and sound, so this might not be for you. But coming from a theoretical standpoint, this is a good improvement. The only thing that I'm unsure about is whether the improvement is brought about by the change in the cone design and the rubber surround, or if they actually tune the DSP to achieve that. Based on the visual evidence, the likelihood is that this change is from the cone design change itself. 
So if you are wondering whether you want a Gen 2 to save some money or you want to wait for a Gen 3, this should give you an extra data point to consider. If you already have the Gen 2, this might be the one reason that will push you over the edge to upgrade. Just don't blame me for it. Well, unless it is your other half nagging at your spending on Sonos again. In which case, I don't mind taking the fall for it, so my fault. I sure hope today's video has been useful for you and you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed producing it. Do subscribe for more of my detailed reviews on wireless audio and Sonos products. If you want to hear a sound comparison between the Sub Gen 2 and the Gen 3, check out my previous video in the link above and I'll see you in my next video.